an intricate relationship exists between the Western Ghats and its people. Indigenous tribes and agriculturists have subsisted of these rich and fertile lands for centuries. But with the gap between urban and rural incomes growing fast and the pressures on natural resources mounting, the Ghats' capacity to sustain the livelihoods of rural communities is diminishing rapidly. To arrest this trend, AERF in Maharashtra and Junglescapes in Karnataka are working to transform rural economies based on destructive practices to those that are sustainable and scientifically sound. Working hand in hand with local communities, they are bridging the gap between economies and conservation. The Northern Western Ghats landscapes, as far as Maharashtra is concerned, in terms of the uniqueness, you have forest on the top, on the crest. There are very less forests on the slopes. And then there are lower hills where quite a bit of forest is there. We are working in the landscapes where the ownership is with the communities. But over the years, we have also worked in protected areas in the Northern Western Ghats. So we have sufficient experiences of working with communities who are living in the protected areas uh, and also communities who are living outside protected areas. We have significant animal biodiversity uh, in spite of the fact that most of the forests are owned by communities. And in certain pockets, we see that the health of the forest on community lands is even better from the forest in, in the protected areas. Indigenous communities still are very much dependent on forest and the non-timber forest produce. One of the major threats to the forest landscape is illegal felling of trees and expansion of agriculture and urbanization. That is because of the poor understanding of economic benefits of sustainable utilization of biodiversity. Money earned from selling forests to logging contractors cannot be called as a sustainable income. We wanted to introduce a thought where conservation will not mean foregoing any economic benefits, that you can actually earn more by following good practices like the fair wild certification you can get at least 300 percent more for the same produce that you sell in the local market if that thought can be communicated to the local communities i think they would still manage the resources sustainably the terminal village trees are an ecosystem in themselves they support a variety of plants animals they are hosting nesting sites of great hornbills Local communities will be benefiting for the first time in last 25 years from the sale of fruits of Terminal Belerica. That practice was, uh, has been revived. Through sale of these fruits, in the first year, we are making uh, a turnover of 2.5 lakhs. If you go to visit communities in Bhima Shankar, which have been collecting Haritaki fruits from their forest for last 300 years, their understanding of that resource remains still poor. For the first time, after the sanctuary was declared, they got their trees recorded on their land. And that in turn means they have got access to the free market, which was not the case before this project came into being. I think in terms of uh, direct benefits, the indigenous communities from Bhima Shankar, through the Fair Wild project, they are getting 400% rise while they sold fruits of uh, Terminal Chabula to the processing center that we have set up. Through the green entrepreneurship project, we can measure the conservation benefits. I can uh, tell you, in the first year, we are saving 1,000 giant trees of Terminal Belerica because of the sustainable collection of the fruits. Similarly, we are saving about 30 nesting sites of hornbills. Vast tracts of the forest in the northern western Ghats are still owned by local communities. People are gradually understanding that logging of forest is not a sustainable income, that developing value chains and using resources sustainably is actually the true answer. I think the support from Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund has been extremely important for AERF to extend its work at a landscape level. I think this is a significant leap 
in our own understanding of how businesses, if biodiversity-based business enterprises, can actually contribute to conservation. By introducing new and original ideas into the Western Ghats' rural economic systems, AERF and Junglescapes have demonstrated successful green economy models. By linking producers to markets for environmentally sustainable products, these groups have shown that with the right approach, conservation of nature can deliver more economic benefits than unsustainable exploitation. Such examples point the way to the wider emergence of green economies in the Western Ghats.